introduction. Okay, so let me introduce myself a little bit. Uh, my name is Zhao Ray. I currently am working as a data science in Shopee. Uh, so I, we, our team are doing a lot of e-commerce related uh, machine learning projects such as a recommendation system for detection and paid ads. So before joining Shopee, I got my PhD degree from NTU. Uh, at that time, my research topic is about the natural language processing and deep learning. Okay, so uh, actually today's my talk will cover two parts. The first part is why the Python is so popular in the machine learning and data science area, and the Python practice that we use a lot. So the second part, I will pick up three basic tools that we that, that I use a lot. Okay, so uh, let's start with this figure. Sorry. Okay, so let's start with this figure. So this figure is actually from the Indeed website. So the Indeed website is actually a job posting website. So, uh, so the line represents the percentage of the matching job posting given the query. So the query consists of the uh, various Python uh, programming language and machine learning and data science. So if the, if the number is high, it means the demanding is high. So uh, as we can see in this figure, for actually the, the data is quite outdated, but after 2016, the Python has been ranked number one in the machine learning and data science. Okay, so as can be seen in this figure, Python is the most popular programming language in the machine learning and data science areas. So why the Python is so popular in data science? Based on my standing, I think uh, it can be, it actually has three factors. So the first one is Python is actually quite simple and elegant and consistent. So compared to C and C++, Python is actually a very high level programming language. It's very easy for us to pick it up. And also it achieves a trade-off, a good balance in between the complexity and also the performance. Because as we all know, the most used uh, Python interpreter is C Python, which is written in C. So the performance is actually guaranteed. And also because the Python is a kind of like full, it's an open source. So it provides a full collection of tools to do the machine learning, uh, de uh, machine learning modeling and also deploy the machine learning models. So in our team, actually, we use a lot of Python tools. So here, I just give a very brief summarization about the Python tools that we use a lot. I just, I just summarize into four aspects. So the first aspect is the data processing. So we will use Pandas. Actually, it's a kind of like Excel in the Python. I think our college will, from operation team, will introduce it later. And also, we have the Matplotlib, which can help us do the, do the data visualization. And also, we have kind of like multi-processing tools which help us do the parallel computing to speed up our process. Okay, so for the machine learning part, we use uh, Scikit-learn, which provides a implementation, implementation of a lot of machine learning models. And we also have a Scikit image and OpenCV for image processing. So for if we want to do the natural language processing, we will use Jensen, we will use NLTK. But if we want to do the deep learning models, we will rely on the TensorFlow and the Keras. And if we want to deploy the machine learning models on distributed computing platform, we will use the Spark machine learning library. And also, also after the model uh, de deployment, we can use the web server AP API to deploy our models. Here we can use the Flask and the Geonicon. And also we will use a lot of other open source tools. Uh, for example, XGBoost, like G GBM to realize some machine learning models. And if, if we want to realize a very efficient database, we will just use the Redis. And uh, if we want to do the kind of like job scheduling, do the quant job things, we will use Airflow to help us kind of like automatically do the job scheduling. And uh, we will also use a notebook, which is kind of like web-based interface to do kind of like, to do the uh, rapid, uh, rapid prototyping of the machine learning projects. So here, today I will pick up three basic tools. But I, I but sorry, okay, sorry, uh, sorry, could you, sorry, Michelle. Okay, so, so actually today I will pick up three tools. So the, I will not touch the machine learning parts because of today's conference is for the Python. So I will, I will talk about uh, three basic tools that actually help us a lot when we do the machine learning model deployment. So the first, the first thing is, uh, is named the virtual EMV. So virtual EMV is actually a very strong, very strong Python package that help us to manage the Python, in, Python project environment. So uh, why the controlling the Python dependency is quite important? Uh, because, uh, so let me take the TensorFlow as an example. Actually, I want to ask how many of you guys have heard TensorFlow or used TensorFlow before? Wow, uh, quite a lot, cool. 
Okay, so I think for, for these people, you, you know this or use this, you must know that TensorFlow actually has a lot of versions. So TensorFlow is actually a scientific computing library developed by Google. And Google is actually very actively maintaining this package. I think every two months, a new version will come out. So for example, if two months ago, we, are trying to, we were trying to build a machine learning model based on TensorFlow, we may use a TensorFlow R1.5, but maybe after two, after two months, after two months passed, we want to deploy our model. So we need to transfer our project from our previous server to another server. So the, the server may be the live server, right? So we just copy our code and we want to install the TensorFlow. But we may just uh, wrongly install the newest version, for example, the R1.7. Because be between the different versions, the syntax may be different. So it may cause some problems if you, if you want to just run this code this project. So, so it means it is very, very important to keep our Python project's dependency very clean or in a, in a self-contained uh, subdirectory. So it is not easy to transfer your project from one place to another space. So that's how does the virtual environment help us to do that. Okay, so here the virtual environment will help you to manage the Python environments and uh, by, based on the virtual environment, we can create a complete and self-contained Python uh, runtime environment in the subdirectory. So in this way, you can just install, install all the Python packages specific to this project. Okay, so in the so later I will uh, so I, I'm going to do a quick demo about this virtual environment. I'll call the mic. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I'm trying to connect to the screen computer. Okay, I think. Okay, okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so currently we arrive at a terminal. So we firstly we open a terminal, and if you if for example, if we want just to create a, 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 firstly I go to this folder to make it clean. So there's nothing here. So firstly, if we want to create a virtual environment, we only need to say virtual, virtual env, and then we follow by a, fo a photo name. Actually the photo name, uh, sorry. I just test the wrong name, okay? So we, we just uh, follow by the photo name. So the photo name actually will be the, will be the environment name. So we can see here, we have a new Python uh, exist in this folder. And then they are trying to help us to install the pipe and also set up tools. It may take some time. I think it will be fast. Yeah, let's wait. And also we can, so here, so here is actually, they are trying to build a virtual environment for us. Uh, it may take some time. Okay, cool, so it's done. Okay, so if we want to, so actually, uh, what, what does this command help us to do? They create, they kind of like create a folder. So you can see it has, a, we have a folder here, and uh, they, will, they will create some Python um, packages and also the PIP for us, so under this folder. So if we want to, so if we want to activate this thing, we need to say source, the, 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 the folder name, which is also the environment name, and then bin, activate. So you can see the environment name test will just pop out, pop out uh, in front of the in front of the command line. So if we want to test which uh, which kind of Python environment we are in, so we only need to type which Python. So actually, this one is points to the point to the specific location. So for compare, we, uh, if I just go to the another to my default setting, so if I type which Python, actually will default to different locations. Okay, so it means this the left environment will be independent from the left from the right environment. So these two environments will not disturb each other. If, for example, if we want to install a, a specific NumPy uh, package version, so we only need, need to type pip install right, and uh, and then at the same time, I think we can, I can test which NumPy version in our default Python Python setting. So I uh, import. NumPy, and I, I, 
They call NumPy. Oh, okay. I think the computer is quite nervous. Okay, I just uh, print on a NumPy version. Okay, so the version is out at one point eight, right? How not? At the same time, the in the virtual environment, the NumPy is also already. So let's just test this NumPy. This NumPy should be should be the specific version that I just installed before. So it should be it should be up one point eleven point one. So if I print NumPy version. So it's the, the exact the space, uh, exact uh, version that we want. Okay. So so and uh, and also a good thing is that the pipe uh, provide us a very uh, a very good function to help us to manage to to record the Python packages that we have already installed. We only need to uh, use a pipe uh, pipe freeze. So it will just list all the packages that you have already installed. So you if you want to do a record to a local file, you just uh, for example, just uh, uh, name uh, name. You just you, you can just uh, print print this package information to a uh, txt. Okay, so actually we just uh, generate this this txt. So so if you so, oh, okay, sure, 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 sure. Uh, actually, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> okay. Control F. That's no clear. Oh, okay, I got it. Okay. Try to increase the font size. You can press Command Plus. Command Plus. Okay. Can clear cool. again. Okay, got it. Okay, so it's. Okay, so it's it's, it's okay, so it's okay, cool. Okay, so so by do by doing this way. Uh, by doing this way, so we can have uh, we can have this local file, right? Requirements.txt. So next time, if if we want to try to if we want to replicate the Python environments, we only need to copy this txt file to another location. And if we want to install the same package, we only need to create a new environment and then use the uh, pip install and dash r and then point to this local test, and it will help us. Or because of because we are already in the same environment, so let me deactivate. Then we, we will jump to another. We, we will just uh, exist from the existing environment. So, so by doing this way, we can easily manage our Python environment and uh, do the uh, project transfer. Okay. How many environments can we create? Uh, it's just, just no limitation. We can create uh, as much as you want. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So, so that's the. Uh, that's uh, that's how to. Oh, Michelle, could you go back to the slides? Cool. Okay, so. Uh, okay. So the uh, based on the previous demo, the uh, the virtual environment can apply this basic comments. So the we can use the virtual env followed by the environment name. And also, if we if we want to point our environment to a specific Python location, so we just only need to pass the Python location to this command. And if we want to activate this environment, we only need to say source and the environment name and being activated. And if if we want just exist this environment, we only need to say deactivate. And also this. Can uh, like two pipe comments will help us easily transfer our project. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Next slide. Next slide. I think the slide is missing. I think there are some next slides. Oh, I think the slide is good. I'll jump to. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I think some slides are kind of like jump jump into the front page. Okay, cool. Okay, so the second the second tool that I want to introduce is the uh, Jupyter Notebook. So Jupyter Notebook is a uh, kind of like browser based uh, interface for for us to do a uh, rapid uh, prototyping of machine learning and data science projects. So from its official website, so it, they introduce themselves as following: Jupyter is an open source project aiming at uh, creating a better work experience for the data scientists. So the uh, Jupyter book actually has a 
following good points. The first one is provide an uh, interactive and a scripting, scripting spot. And the uh, second point is, is, is just a browser based, so it's very convenient to open it up and also it supports windows such as test and the code and the graphs and also the even videos and the pictures. So, uh, so, based on, so because of this point, so it's very convenient for us to share our code and uh, do, the, uh, do the collaboration work. So uh, I'm going to also do a quick demo about the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so, uh, so in the Jupyter Notebook, I actually I have created an uh, environment before, so I need to uh, activate this environment, and this environment have already installed the Jupyter Notebook and other packages, I will give the demo. Okay, so the, if we want to open the Jupyter Notebook, we just need to say Jupyter Notebook, and the browsers will automatically open up the interface. Okay, because I need to change the screen, so I need to change to the software. I think we need some time. Yeah. I think here, here, maybe, maybe fast. Okay, cool. The browsers has already. Okay, here we have arrived as a, a notebook interface. So here is actually what notebooks looks like. So if we want to uh, build a new notebook, we only need to click new here, and then we want to, our kernel is based on the Python 2. So then it will create a notebook. So th that's actually what does the notebook looks like. So the first thing is that we can change the notebook name. So we only need to click the untitled and put, for example, hello, POSG. Okay, so actually the, this one is named the cell structure, which is a very important concept for the Jupyter Notebook. So because in the cell structure, we can put code here, we can even put markdown test here, if you are familiar with the markdown syntax. And uh, so based on the, because of the cell structure, we can easily segment our code into different parts. So here I will uh, give a example. For example, you want to uh, import the NumPy, and we only need the only need to click this wrong, and the NumPy package will be will be imported here. And if we want to render to, to generate some random numbers, so we just need to type a is equal to mp dot. If we forgot the command name, right? We only need to hit the tab, so it can do help us to do a kind of like uh, automatic suggestion. Let's zoom in this task, okay? So we only need to the random, and if I still rem uh, cannot remember the function name, so I still can, I still can uh, hit tab, and it will just give me the, the suggestion, and uh, so not referring at this function, but if we don't remember the function usage, we only need to hit the type and shift, shift and shift, shift, and it will kind of like uh, give the documentation for the, for the, for the function. So here, we want to generate 10 random numbers. So we only need to do this way, and it will help us to generate, oh sorry, I think I need to pass a size here. So it will help us to generate uh, numbers, and we can just print, print this number, and also if we want, and also even we can, we can kind of like print, print this, uh, we can also plot this, this array, I think, uh, I think the mouse is not, not so, so smooth, okay? So if we want, we can also kind of like print A as here. And also, if we, if we know the markdown syntax, we can also make the cell structure as a markdown. And we can do, this is notebook. So it will be kind of the, the, this, this actually the natural test can be embedded to this notebook uh, very smoothly. So based on this kind of structure, it will help us to 
uh, do a very uh, rapid, uh, very fast prototyping, and also we can share our code very easily because it provides a lot of a lot of uh, explanation tests and also the images. Okay, so that's the uh, Jupyter notebook parts. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. Okay, so. So finally, we go to the, 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 the last point. The last point is actually the parallel computing. So uh, what does uh, parallel computing do? Parallel computing is help us to use the CPU with multiple cores, so it can help us to uh, speed our computing process up. So, but actually, the Python is not suitable for parallel computing because of the global interpreter lock. So it means at that time, at, at each at, at each uh, time, so the only Python only allows one statement to be executed. So, but but the, actually, the Python has a multi-processing package. So. Because of the multi-processing package, it can allow us to kind of like spawn multiple sub-process to overcome the disadvantages of the uh, global interpreter uh, lock. So uh, here is uh, the, uh, some good points of the, and also some bad points of the multi-processing packages. The first thing is we'll take advantage of the multiple GPUs, uh, CPUs, sorry, and also it, and also it is a very robust way because failure of one single process will not affect others. But because of because of multi-processing, we are submit the jobs into uh, different, dis uh, different distributed memories. So it definitely will consume a lot of memories. And uh, also, Python multi-processing Python package is good for CPU bounded tasks. So it means if your, ta if, if, if your task needs a lot of mathematical computation, you can use the multi-processing. But if your task is I.O. bounded, which means if you need to process the files from the hard disk, you may consider the multi-threading package. Okay, so here, uh, because of the time limits, I, I will only introduce one class belong to the multi-processing, which is named the pool. So the class, so class pool from the module multi-processing can be used to split our task into different chunks, and then each chunk will be executed in parallel. And also, the pool is actually represents a pool of one or more process that can execute independently on uh, an available process call. So I will use the Jupyter notebook that I introduced uh, before to illustrate this idea. Okay. Actually, I have already created, prepared a notebook file here, so I need to open it up. So, the okay, I need to. Okay, so that's the notebook we have arrived. Okay, so we have arrived the notebook. So the first is the process pro, process pools. So first cell block, we define a, a computing function. So what does a computing function do? The computing function is that it's kind of like a very trivial task. If we give a n positive integer n, and we just all can calculate the summation of the square of the numbers random a sample from the range from the one to the n. So we let's run this uh, code block, and then we have, uh, for example, we have, we, have uh, we, we just randomly generate uh, 4D solid num uh, random numbers, and these numbers are sampled from the range from 0 to 1 solid. And then we can just uh, check the first 10 numbers. So the first 10 numbers are shown here. So a very, very intuitive way to do the, to apply this function we defined before on this array is that we just apply it sequentially. So we, we just uh, do a for loop on these numbers on these numbers, and then we fit this number one by one to this computing operation. And then we can run this block. I think it will, may take some time because it's a sequential way. And uh, we use the time package to, 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 give the, to give the time duration. So we can see if we want to process 40,000 numbers, it may take us uh, for, for, uh, 7, 7.5 seconds, okay? So here, I, here is the parallel processing. So we can actually, we can, we can split all the tasks, this array, to a different chunks. And the different chunks can be executed, uh, can be processed in a parallel way. So here is also a markdown, a markdown syntax. We can just insert the image in this notebook. And so to, to, if we want to use the, 
the process, a multi-process pool, we only need to call this command. We just define define the multi-process input and also put the number of calls into this function. So here we we set the number of calls is equal to two. So it means we will use uh, two calls uh, at the same time. So we we first initialize the this uh, 